how fly fishermen use peacock curl body nymphs. Thought today we'd do a relatively simple one called the fullback. It's made from few materials. The hook is a Daiichi 1270. The Tiemco 200R or any equivalent will work just fine. Most won't weight their fly. I tend to like to put a little a little bit of weight under the thorax to help break the surface tension. You'll need peacock curl. For the original recipe I believe calls for black thread as the ribbing. I find that ultra wire in, in copper brown will work just fine. Just about any pheasant tail will do. I like the golden pheasant tail for the effect that it gives. As I said, most won't weight their fly. They'll depend on a sinking line or they'll a sink tip or uh, putting weight on the leader. I tend to like to put a little bit under the thorax just to help break the surface tension. fullback can be tied on a number of different nymph styles. I like this style because it allows me to go a little smaller but still keep the full body length. How long you should have your tail is a subject of much conjecture, much debate. Some will tell you half the length of the hook shank, others will tell you a third of the length. Of course if you're using different styles of hook that can be a little problematic so some will say uh, half the length of the body, a third of the length of the body I tend to bike mine just long enough to get a little bit of movement in the water but without being overly long. Now notice that I've tied down and forward and then fold this back. to where the tail begins which is basically just over the barb of the hook the idea being that that will break long before it pulls out at this point again the size of the wire that you use will be dependent upon the size of the hook. For, since this is a size 14 I tend to think think of brassy as appropriate creating just about the right segmentation or at least the segmentation that I like. How many strands of peacock curl? The fullback is a uh, usually classified as a generic all-purpose nymph. It imitates nothing specifically while still giving the impression of a variety of food forms. I tend to think of it as a, as a bit of a mayfly imitation. In still water it'll do a passable job as a damselfly nymph. Either way I don't think the abdomen should be that thick so for size 14 I'll only put in four or five strands of peacock curl 
but I do use a dubbing loop. The former chenille peacock curl is a somewhat fragile material and it really should be reinforced when you use it. If you don't know how to use a caliber dubbing tool to create basically a peacock curl chenille, you can take a look at the video that I made immediately preceding this one. which shows you how it's done. It adds durability to the to the body, to the peacock curl. It gives you a few more fish per fly. And frankly, I think it gives you a little better body. Now what you want If it doesn't look right to you, don't be afraid to go back. And straighten it out to where you do feel comfortable with it. What you want is you want to create a little bit of a tapered body moving forward. It doesn't have to be too exaggerated. A taper but you do want a little bit of a taper one of the things to bear in mind is that as you wrap the rib forward you will bring that body down a bit will tend to compress the body now you have a choice here you can either leave what's left of your peacock chenille or you can cut it off. If you cut it off, you'll have to create another for the thorax. I don't find it to be that much of an inconvenience to leave it on, but you will have to watch your bobbin because they will wrap around each other. How many wraps? to the ribbing. Some of it's going to depend on the size of your wire, the size of the hook, your own visual sense. I On a size 14 like this with brassy size wire, I'll try for four or five wraps, maybe even six, depending on exactly how long I've left the abdomen. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tie in another section of the pheasant tail. The original calls for pulling it over the top and I believe it came, they brought it down in a beard style underneath the hook shank. I tend to like to tie mine off to the sides the way you do a pheasant tail. I think it gives a little bit more action in the water. So basically, I leave it a little longer than the abdomen and, t and tail when I tie it in. But again, a lot of that is going to be up to you in terms of your sense of how long the tails or uh, the legs need to be.
what you want to do is make the thorax a little bit thicker than the abdomen but a little slightly tapered toward the front Pull your pheasant tail over the top, forming a shell back. And again, you can tie it underneath if you want. That's the way I think the original was. I tend to like to split it into two roughly equal groups and tie it back along the sides. Either way it will work. Basically what, what I'm after is as it moves through the water, the leg's doing that. It just gives them the appearance of legs it creates movement which is a trigger for the fish and the reality is I don't think the fish care that much one way or the other and in the end, since they're the final arbiters of what what works and what doesn't, that's all that's really important. Now what you can do is as you tie in, get ready to tie in the shell back, tie in a piece of flashback opal or pearl tinsel and when you pull the shell back over pull the tinsel or the flashaboo over the top and it creates a flashback when I do that I tend to like to put an epoxy back on the fly that way it protects the tinsel material it also tends to enhance it But if you don't do that, the least that you want to do is coat the pheasant tail with Dave's Flex Cement. And there you have a fairly simple, fairly straightforward, fairly easy to tie very few materials peacock curl nymph